Here we have the FE ion detector circuit and what we're looking at here is the solder side of the board with the pads and the traces and then coming on to the front side which is the silk side shows all the components. Here we have all the parts laid out ready to be joined together. We've got an aluminium case here so we don't want to use a metal one as that will uh, affect the magnetic field so we're using aluminium, this aluminium case very low cost uh, and all the parts are there we've got some perf board we're going to use to uh, uh, attach the uh, hall effect and the potentiometer to the end plates we've got the two LEDs the hall effect transistor the printed circuit board potentiometer and um, the uh, the magnet there so all of these parts are going to be joined together uh, on the, and here we see how we've put the potentiometer, we've made a hole in one of the end caps and we've placed the potentiometer and we've backed that with a bit of perf board and glued that to the aluminium back plate and the other back plate we've attached the uh, hall effect transistor and to the back of that is a perf board and then to the back of the perf board is glued the magnet so that's the side that holds the magnet and that produces the magnetic field for us uh, so that's those two parts and then we have the one of the sides of the longer side of the of the aluminium box uh, we've placed two holes and inserted two LEDs as, as shown here so those are ready to be connected up and then on the other side of the aluminium box we've drilled the hole for the uh, the battery clip so that's all the pieces really um, the other piece of course is the actual um, circuit board itself now with the circuit board I've used colored leads again yeah because I find that easier but you could use headers if you want just normal headers uh, but I've used colored leads so there's all the components now here they are everything's been soldered up here I've used 30 AWG wire a very thin wire makes it very easy to solder all these pieces together um, so uh, there it is it's all now inside its casing uh, I've screwed everything down the only other thing I need to do now is place an electric masking tape over that hall effect and that's the whole thing now ready to go so the potentiometers there will be used for adjusting the transition between on and off and uh, so yeah so there's the whole thing okay now we've got the finished uh, ferrous metal detector we can try an interesting experiment um, particularly years in newer years they've replaced uh, our coinage for example the Tempe coin now has some iron in it and that's because it's cheaper to produce Tempe coins with a little bit of iron than the old Tempe coins that didn't have any iron in so if I use if I connect this up now and check the uh, the uh, uh, the original the older Tempe coins that go back before 1992 this is pre 1992 you'll find that uh, it doesn't change the lights um, so let's just plug that in for a sec so at the moment, uh, when we place that on, if it goes red, or the green light goes out, then we know that we've got iron in there. So you can see here there's nothing in there. But here's another 10p coin. Now this is a, a recent one. Let's see what happens. There you go. So it's quite interesting. These two, they're exactly, uh, from in monetary terms, they're uh, they're equal. But uh, in actual, uh, the actual the metal in you know in terms of what the metal's worth they're not equal because uh this tempe coin is worth more than this this tempe coin <laughs> so you've got a situation where one tempe coin is worth more than the other tempe coin yeah uh, in 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 terms of in terms of if you melted them down that is of course so yeah that's quite interesting so there's the old one there's the new one now it is the same thing with the one p coins as well so uh <laughs> more modern one p coins uh in fact, they did it earlier for the 1P coins. I mean, they actually, uh, let me see which one it is. So if I, I've got two 1P coins here. They look identical, but uh, let's just see that one. Okay, that's got iron in it. What about this one? This, this one hasn't got iron in it. So we check the dates on these. This one is 1979, and on this one it is 1992. But they actually uh, did the change on these earlier 
Uh, I think that they make the change on these a little bit later on. The, you'd have to look it up. I think it's on the internet. If you Google about the coinage, the UK coinage, you'll find out. Just Google uh, the newer 10p coins with the iron in them. And uh, but it's I didn't realise that until I started mucking around with this. I thought, what's going on here? I got two two coins here. They should they should both be reacting the same. And then I couldn't. And I tried it with these tens, and I found the same thing. And then I thought, oh, hang on, these look a bit newer. And actually, if you if you notice, you can. The weight, obviously, the same weight, but uh, they look very different anyway. Uh, but these ones, uh, you wouldn't really know it so much with these. But, uh, yeah, same thing with the 1P coins. So uh, I was quite surprised. So it just goes to show this is quite, <laughs> quite a bit of a novel, quite a bit of novelty little kit here. But uh, there you go. That's how it works. So when it's all screwed up, you can take your object and uh, let's try that one again. There you go. There's a, an object with iron in it. Uh, so... Same with this one here. Yeah. Iron. There you go, and that's how that, that can work. So you wouldn't always know that.